brought up. So, from my understanding, algorithm is switching towards videos, which maybe in my case would actually help me. So maybe I can join the YouTube Partner Program, which I'm trying to. So, figure today, get my fat butt out the way. We're gonna discuss my guitar collection, my Jackson collection, so to speak. Get a good frame on it. Yeah. I kind of worked my way down on how I accumulated them and in the sequence that I accumulated it in. This is kind of like my arsenal, a little bit. Kind of splurge. Some I kind of keep, you know, normal and then. Some I will either change up uh, pickups depending on my specifications or if there's something that I feel could be corrected to make it even better. Which most most guitar companies that kind of the you know quality issues and stock pickups from the stock company, you know, like an Epiphone pickup or a sector pickup, sometimes they're really good, but hit or miss and most times it, you know I'm like kind of a Duncan guy. I do like my EMGs. So, stay on track. This was my first Jackson that I ever got. Um, well, it's a build or a part of, so the it's the original body of my first Jackson. The dinky, I think it was the JS22. Could be wrong. Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, but yeah, it's got a bolt-on neck. Put a Wonder Woman sticker in there. My mom gave that to me forever ago, so I was like, Pfft. and it's just stayed on there for like 15, 16, almost, almost 16 years. I've had this guitar for like 15, 16 years, or the body at least. It had a Strat configuration. If y'all know or have had the original guitar, let me know in the comment section. Um, it came in black, white, and then uh, kind of like a natural finish, and the natural finish actually looks kind of dope, clean. Um, I soldered a new pickup in, something a little more beefier. Um, it's a, we all, it's kind of obvious, state that obvious. It's a humbucker single coil, single coil HSS configuration. I painted the back of my neck to a gloss black to kind of complement it. Like two years ago, three years ago, I did it a little while ago, like right when I was starting my YouTube channel. I was like, I can't afford a solo, so I will build one. So I did, and. So I configured it from a Strat configuration to a uh, Floyd Rose. Um, just kind of jerry rigged it in a way that I was kind of guessing, but works so it stays in tune it's a cheaper you know js pin metal of leg rows so okay that one scared me didn't want it to drop these are my bodies next one we have we can feature this guy's cool this guy's cool and i had this pop out so i had to like kind of jerry rig a drill and then just beat it in with a hammer so it was locked in so I, because uh, string pressure is like 150, 160, around there. Maybe not that exact number, but the pressure of a guitar string is around that. And it will literally start cutting the wood if you don't have saddles or guards. Which I was experiencing, so I had to go fix that issue. I was like, why is my... So the issue I was having is every time I did something like that... A little wing. See, it stays a toe, dude. So, like, every time I would go, woo, this would go flat or pop the string just because I didn't have the proper guard because this thing popped off. It's a JS. 
It's the JS32T King V. Um, they still sell it at Sweetwater. Uh, it's a really cool guitar. If you're trying to get into a King V or buy a modding platform or something that you're not going to go take on stage and, you know, just stock, you know, buy it and not do anything with it and then just go, yeah, it's kind of like a warmer feeler. So, like, I, I would suggest either if you're like a starter, you know, musician or getting your feet wet and you want a Jackson, very good option for you. If you're intermediate, or technical or do bends or chromatics or pentatonics or you know any 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 type of you know scale like something a little more fancy than like you know than GED or like because you do power chords all day on the stock one but the moment you start going a little like And doing crazy bands and hitting harmonics, that's when, if you have the stock one, you might encounter instability issues. This thing, I don't know why, over the, it, it's just battle hardened. I customized it to kind of a King V, or a King V, K, I can't talk. King V KV2 USA model. It's not, definitely not it, but <laughs> probably the closest thing I can get to it at the moment. Oh, fun fact. I was really, really drunk, and I just spearheaded this thing into the ground. <laughs> um, shout out to uh, Edward Hernandez the third, buddy of mine. Um, yeah, look at that thing. But from far away, you wouldn't even know until I pointed it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I cracked it, super glued it. Uh, probably not a good idea to use super glue because it expands, and wood glue is probably way better of an option. So I'm telling you before, you know, I tell you. You know, I did it kind of dumb mood. Also, when you use super glue on a body, it expands the finish, so it kind of looks foggy. Don't use super glue. But anyway, so I did that, and it looked better, and it was attached. And then I just took Sharpie, you know, did my thing with it. But this thing rocks. It still plays. You know, I think I got a... Ooh, this one's actually tight. This one's not tight. So I just got a pack uh, to, in order to fix loose knobs. So I'm just kind of guiding you guys. Um, pop the back plate off hold it on the one end and then just have it secure while you tight it on both ends i made a video and i didn't do that or describe doing that and someone pointed that out so kudos to that person for correcting me because you're 100 right all you're going to do is just end up over torquing this if you're not holding and securing that back pot so i got to do that you know what i'm going to do that on the video right now I need to make like a two, three hour video so my subscribers can just get my hours up, man. Because we need it. So let me grab my tool, toolbox, DVD brain. And it really doesn't take too long. So open this. Walk back up here. Take off your back plane. Over twix. What? Fuck. Come on. <laughs> Don't tell me you're stressed. Okay, I must have been really drunk and then just slam, slam that thing in there. Whack! Fist and all, Jesus, that thing was on there. Got it though. I had to use down pressure for that. I was like, whack! Oh, there's only one, two, sweet. So, this won't, hopefully, won't take as long as I was originally predicting. I thought it was gonna take like five minutes. Probably break this shit down with couple, minute and a half. Starting now. Okay. 
back plates off, grab your pot, heat a bowl up in here. Get that on. So I'm holding this piece, top bar. If you have the ability to, I would suggest doing this. Gosh, no, don't put a socket in your mouth. All right. Using a socket. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, there it is. See how I just fixed that? Mount loose. Not loose. Don't hear it throbbing anymore. Now both my pots are tight. Probably should have done that a while ago, but I was like, screw it, might as well be informative. Put my black pit, <laughs> put my back plate back on. Okay. Oh, Where's the screw, man? Where's the damn screw? Make sure it's tight so the back plane all wobbly so your electronics are secure. I don't think I have to remind you, but yeah. Alrighty. So that's a solid unit once you actually sit there and tweak with it and set it up. Next one. Next one I got was this one. My Jackson JS3. This was the original paint when it came in. Oh, there's still like some paint I gotta peel. I just forgot about. But I think it's sick as shit. I'm not a bassist, but I have one, so I have studio applications. I think there's still paint. I might want to peel that. It might look cool, because that looks cool. Some of y'all might be like, that looks like crap, but it's like it goes to black, blue. Yeah, this thing's fun. And I acquired that probably in the same time, within the same year, like 2021. Uh, got this guy, 2020-2021. That first one I showed you, I got that like in 2013-2012. And after that, now we're starting to get to the big boys. 
the net. Ooh. Oh, I see, bro. I need to do his race. Where is the screwdriver? Back plate's looking a little sad. Mm Jackson KEXQ quilt top. Connect your body construction. Pulled out the stock Jackson, which I have one of these, and then I swapped it for a trim bucker, a TB4. That yeah, seems sweet. I gotta switch out all the Floyd Roses that I have with actual original Floyd Roses because all of them have the specials and those things are great until like, you play them for a while and the material like... I like, do you see how flat and out of pitch everything is? It's like up, down, left, right and not center at all. Anything but center. I mean, it's all stabilized too. My, my blade's flat. So, you know. Um, so uh, uh, it's down to probably this not being this piece right here that metal block it's kind of zinc and s steel or something but it needs to be brass brass is heavier so it's a more stable this thing is beautiful and I can't wait to actually upgrade it so I can actually get back to playing it because so this thing is beautiful it sounds good even the neck pickup complements the Duncan that I put in this thing's sweet it's one of my babies can't wait to get her back in operation. She is sweet. Next guy on the list. Same issue. Floyd Rose Special. And I bought this one used. So I saved myself like 300 bucks. Actually, yeah, I did. Because even when I bought, if I bought this brand new, I'd still have to like replace the Floyd Rose. Because the special isn't. People either fucking praise it, but it, the, the specials are made in Korea, and something about the material, and it, it it's not, and it, it, it sounds like almost like, it's not original, so it's crap. No, I'm genuinely telling you from first person experience, you will hit these after you got it all stable to a level, and then you'll just go, and then now this is no longer its original tuning, it's like one or two steps higher or lower than it should be in your locking platform system so you got to unlock the the top of the neck switch everything out it's once it when it works it's awesome that's why i still love floyd roses that's why i'm never gonna you know get rid of these guitars and i just want to upgrade them so i can get get back to having them in my videos but that also disclaimer that's why they haven't been in my videos because i've been using my king v probably since like <laughs> like the last couple couple of months six seven months uh maybe whenever i got it i don't think I got, i've had it for that long but it, it feels kind of around there after i got my soloist that's also my heaviest guitar that soloist that orange one i just showed y'all that thing weighs in probably almost close to nine pounds like it feels close to if not more heavier than a les paul like you, you gotta actually like you know pick it up and play and and lurk it around but it's it's a killer machine i love soloists they're very correct in design 
Next guy is my main guitar right now. And I will vouch, and this is my favorite guitar out of all my guitars. Probably because I put so much work. <laughs> if you all if y'all know the original model or are familiar with this model. Um it's all chrome hardware, all China. Yay or nay. On a guitar I want like kind of nice material and you know I don't want defects or you know something that's not gonna be a stable platform. So it was a cool guitar and it did work and it did kind of stay in tune but you know as I was complaining with that guitar you'd be like But like after you do that for like less than two minutes, you'd be <clears throat> you know out of key or flat. And when you're you know somewhat of a, I don't view myself as like the best guitar player in the world by any means. And I'm not trying to you know go ah I'm better than it. You no, know? I know there's a lot of people that be like your technique sucks. But like every guitar player is different because we all kind of like real guitar players. If you actually are into it, you kind of learn your skills, you learn your techniques your bag of tricks or whatever and then after that you know you, you kind of use those to kind of personify you on the fretboard like it, that's why guitarists like they'll be like you know I, for example if I play the guitar at Motor City um you know and I'm wailing nobody probably nobody's going to be able to replicate what I'm doing right wrong bad or indifferent but the guy that's like playing you know the um multi thousand dollar rig going doing sweep picking which is you know like death metal like tapping and you know i'm more of a traditionalist so i like power chords like going at it i like kind of ascending up and down the fretboard and i do i do tap and i honestly will critique myself i need to get better and learn the more tapping skills which is you know just me being honest i'm not lying but like like as i said i'm not a fucking poser i'm not trying to tell you something to steer you wrong this thing kicks fucking ass and balls and ass and balls at the same time. Like this thing, sick. The pickups are awesome. It's, it's it, no no wigglies. Nope. This thing feels super super tight. More tight than it should because you have to actually like kind of fist it in. You have to actually push and use some force, but that that's fine by me. It means it's not gonna fall out or my jack's gonna get not get loose, and that's when. I got the guitar, so I didn't have to do anything. I might I might leave it alone. I don't want to go tighten it with a torque again. Kind of like what you have to do the same thing with when, when you have widgets, you have to use a socket and then hold the other side just tighten it. But no, I've never had to do that once. And I've had this guitar for six months. And y'all know if you're an actual subscriber of mine, if you're an actual subscriber of mine, you know. It's been my main guitar for a minute, and I think it's probably going to stay that way. Just because this guitar sounds good, it stays in tune, with with or without, the, uh, I mean, with or without, without the locking nuts, because y'all know this is a tu uh, Tom Tunematic system with the, with, the, with the tail stop. And let me go into my specs real quick, so switch the volume knobs for black, and these are also off a different Jackson. I had extra from one of my spares, or, you know, got parts and stuff. Um, it's got a Tone Ninja in the bridge, which is super cool. Tone Ninja is nice. Why did, why did I just point to that, the, 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 the tail stop? So this is a Tone Ninja, a Tunematic, and I think they're made in the USA. It's cost me 30 bucks, and it, it works. It's great. It's phenomenal. It's the best. <laughs> But no, it's actually really, really cool, and it actually is. And it's supposed to help with like big fees, but it it just adds more stability with the roller saddles because there's less friction, less of a hard point. Instead of a direct dead bend, these roller saddles do help with tension. So.
<laughs> that was my bad. Took me a minute to figure that out. I, when I restring this, I gotta very carefully bolt this back down because I was like, what's doing that? But that's not then, that was my bad. But doesn't it just look so much better in black? Instead of having just gold blinding you like a mirror. You get the black and white, the yin and yang. Yeah, this thing's my favorite guitar. Got the Grover tuners, Tone Ninja, Gibson, Stocktail, three way toggle switch, EMG 81, EMG 85. Very, 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 very cool guitar. The best, one of the best, if not the best guitar I've ever owned. After touching it, in my opinion, putting more money into it. Okay, last. Not certainly least. Or certainly not least, I should have said. Oh, gee. Sky Yin King V signature. But it's really a dime bag signature. Why am I playing it like it's plugged in? Sorry, but this thing is, this is my second best guitar. It's got a three or four uh, flame top, and it moves too. That's my best guitar, this is my prettiest guitar. But when, you, when we get in a Floyd Rose, uh, Floyd Rose original, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be like stacking right neck to neck with that white V that I have. through I put a dime bucker in it I taped up the pickups very similar to the SM slime that dime used to have you know what's funny this is actually my lightest guitar it feels like it's six pounds maybe six and a half Yeah, this thing is awesome. It's made out of Namico or some type of wood that starts with an N that's supposedly exotic. Sounds really good on my aunt, on my tube aunt. I will say. Sounds really good actually. Get back and frame for a sec. So yeah, 
I hope you actually sat here and watched me describe this and give you a little history on the guitars and, you know, time stamps. Because it took me probably over the course of, you know, my, my little life to my adult life um, to have all this and, like, work for it, you know. I think the only one that was an actual gift was that body from that, from this guy. Yeah, my dad bought me this body, and it was a jazz, and y'all know what the jazz is. I mean, first of all, money and shit, if your fucking dad buys you a guitar, be fucking grateful. Love him because he did that with love from the bottom of his heart. Um, you know, I didn't come from money, you know, I kind of actually make money now. I mean, it kind of battle hunted me where I'm like, I'm not going to live like you, motherfucker. I'm going to buy all, all these guitars. Meanwhile, I didn't live disgustingly bad, but, you know, we, we didn't get all spoiled and shit. I'll tell you a little fun story. I had that body, that JS, it cost, I think, like 180 or maybe 200 bucks at the time. Yeah, uh, Sweetwater. And I had that, my little Line, line 6 15 watt, thinking I was a badass. I was like, yeah, I got, I got my Jackson. I'm going I'm to be like Damon Stang. I'm so cool. Dude, this kid shat on me, bro. <laughs> Not literally, but like... My first band practice, it was like this real bougie, bad, nice, expensive ass fucking neighborhood and shit, like mansions and shit. Like, I'm not gonna say the the name of the place, but yeah, it was real high class, and it kind of it made me feel very small. I'm not gonna lie, because it's like a mansion, it's like a movie theater. Anyway, so I'm, I, we're walking in, and I'm setting up, I pop my stuff in, I have my little Jackson, the JS model. Little, little basswood guitar <laughs> and it sounded like shit at the time pickups weren't that great it was like a little stock even worse than they do now they don't sound that great now um so yeah i'm all ready to go this guy pulls up with his marshall this big ass fucking valve double combo and then which ain't that really impressive but he also had a stack too which was kind of cool so it was a little third sorry uh, there's a little 13 year old kid just walking around with like fucking you know, two thousand dollars worth of amps, and then he pulls out this custom shop Gibson uh, Five Flame Blueberry Burst Les Paul. Bro, it's like my favorite color. At that day, I was like, you know what? Fuck Gibson. It's just for spoiled little shits that just want to pull, you know, play A B G D. But that's actually, it's kind of wrong. It's it's right and wrong. Because if you go to a guitar uh, store or, or maybe a local store that actually deals with custom Gibsons, you'll see like just a bunch of snob rich people buy predominantly the most expensive custom shot. Some of them actually play. Play pretty good and probably make money. More money than I am making music right now. And so I'm probably just talking shit. No, but seriously. Then there's the guys that actually, you've been playing for Gibson for a minute and you know, the old heads. There's the old heads and then there's the rich posers that buy Gibsons. Those are the two type of people. But anyways. I was just so angry because I had, it was just jealousy, I was jealous, but, but the kind of, hence why I'm buying so many, you know, filling a void, in a black hole, sitting in the bottom of my heart, no I'm kidding, <laughs> but no seriously, these things kept me out of trouble, guitar's great, uh, if you're younger, go, go get into it, you know, it's, it's definitely like, it's like Navy SEALs, like jump, jump, go, go. You have to jump out the plane. You can't like, you know, wait for everyone else to jump. You gotta go, it's your your trip, your adventure, man. And it's little yin yang, weird little world we all exist in today. But, that's in tune. This thing's not. <laughs> it's that basswood. This is made out of that decent wood. It's got a good finish. I think it's a nitro finish, it could be wrong. No, it's polyurethane. I think it's polyurethane. But yeah, let me know in the comment section which one you like, which one is your favorite, which one you thought, you know, you either dislike or like, or something that you point, wanted to point out um, on these specific models or have any questions on them, or own one and want to have a conversation about owning them and, you know, have comparative thoughts and, you know, but, yeah, more videos need to come out of me when I have the free time so that maybe one day I don't have to like, you know, go to work. I could just stay home and work and do this all day. Cause I, this is all me, man. 
I, I bought all of these guys. I, it kind of like brought all of these guys out before I started making the video. And I was like, do I have a problem? Nah. <laughs> I'm probably gonna buy another 15 more guitars. Uh, but that's that's okay. That's the the problem of being a guitar player. It's a bug. But I also want to advise you guys, my viewers, is that it's not in how many guitars you have. It's what you do with the guitars. I just like guitars, so I like. I'm at a point where like I have this obsessive, you know, compulsive disorder where like I'm trying to find different guitars that like suit me. But also, one guitar does not suit all. So that's another problem with guitars. Also, they're expensive. It sucks being a musician. It sucks being a guitar. It doesn't. Not, not in a living and experiencing sense. It's just it bites you in the ass sometimes because you see a shiny thing, the Baldini. Bro, I, that released in a month, and I came up with a fun to get that in my apartment. I was like, do, 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 do. now, now, can we do it now? And he's like, no. And then I texted him like, everyone's on the internet buying this thing. Can you ship it to my house? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, sweet. And it showed up two days later, and I was kind of. It's kind of mind blowing. I had the same effect that you guys did when when I showed you that video of me popping in that uh, David Steam uh, Vanguard case. That was cool, man. That was cool. ooh shit. Anyways, y'all be safe. Stay safe. If y'all have any questions or have any video ideas, let me know. Look at me. I'm all hunched over like Igor. Oh. Oh man, I'm thinking about Frank and Thumb right now. I'm dumb. <laughs> shit. I'm all. Y'all have no clue what that is. Uh, but no, love, peace, happiness, keep, you, you know, fucking rocking and stay heavy metal, dudes. Stay safe. All love.